Hi, everyone. Anthony Morganti here. Some of you may know that a couple weeks ago, I did a video demonstrating all of the new features found in the current version of Photoshop, Photoshop 2025. This is that video, and you'll notice that I gave it the fitting title, What's New in Photoshop 2025? But I also wrote, in parentheses, something is broken. Specifically, there is a new feature in this version of Photoshop called Find Distractions. You could do two different things with Find Distractions. One of the things you could do is, with a single click, you'll be able to remove any power lines that are in a scene. That function, that feature works perfectly for me. I didn't have any problem with that at all. The other thing you could do with Find Distractions is you could remove any people from a scene. This is a great feature if you're a travel photographer. For example, in the video, I'm showing this image of a carriage that I took at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, and you'll notice that there are a couple people that kind of wandered in the scene. Now, with this tool, I'd be able to click. It would find the people. It would put a mask over them. I'd be able to modify the mask if I want to. Then with another click, it'll remove the people. Unfortunately, you'll notice there's an error up here at the top couldn't find any people who are not the subject of the image. I tried this feature on at least a half a dozen different photos, and it was never able to find any people in the scene. It always came up with this error. Now, I surmised in this video that it was a problem with my graphics card. And the reason why I came to that conclusion is because some years ago, when Adobe released the AI masking in Lightroom and Camera Raw, it didn't work on this computer for people. It was never able to find a person with the AI masking. So I submitted a bug report to Adobe. They got back to me and they told me that it was a problem with my GPU of my computer and there really wasn't anything I could do about it. Well, magically, a few months later, I can't remember to tell you the truth if Adobe released an update to Lightroom or if... Apple released an update to their operating system, but something got updated and all of a sudden it started working. So I'm able to do people masking now on my iMac. I was always able to do it on my MacBook. So that was definitely a graphics processor issue. That's why I think this is a graphics processor issue. Well, anyway, I posted this video and yesterday... I got an email from Adobe, of all people. Now, I did not submit this as a, as a bug report. They just happened to stumble across my video, and they wanted to get back to me and tell me that there is a way to work around this. It's just a setting. All I got to do is change a setting, and it will work fine. And I'm happy to say it does, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, we're going to go to the image. This is that image I just showed you. We're in Photoshop. Now, I didn't change the setting yet. I just want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is specifically for those of you who may not have watched my previous video. And by the way, I'll have a link to that previous video in the description below this video. I go over everything that is new in this latest version of Photoshop, so you may want to catch up by watching that video. Now, I want to remove the two people, so I want to use this new feature. The new feature is found in the, um, the healing or the remove tool. I'm sorry, it's this little band-aid right here that has the two stars. The uh, keyboard shortcut is the J key, but the keyboard shortcut is shared. That keyboard shortcut, that J key, is shared by a number of different tools. So just come over here, find the little Band-Aid with the two stars, and click on it. Then at the top, you'll see there's an option, Find Distractions, also a mode. By default, it's going to be in Auto Mode, and that's what I left it in. That seems to work well. You do have the option to always use Generative AI or to not use Generative AI. Uh, if you're in auto, it will determine whether or not generative AI is needed. So I just left it in auto. It seems to work fine. Uh, definitely have sample all layers checked if the people are on a layer that is below the layer you're clicked on. In this case, I don't need a click, but it doesn't hurt having it clicked. Then what you want to do is then go up to find distractions and go to people. You can see it has wires and cables. That's one click removal for wires and cables. Just click it and it's going to remove the wires and cables. For people, it is editable, meaning when I click this, theoretically, if this were working, it will just put masks over the people, and I'd have a brush, and I could modify the uh, brush or modify the mask. And you'll notice, couldn't find any people who are not the subject of the image. 
and it does this every single time. We'll go to another one. This is Ohio State's the Horseshoe Stadium in Ohio State, and you could see that uh, there's people, right? We want to remove those. So again, I'm in the Remove tool. We'll go to Find Distractions. We'll go to People. And just to make a point, I'll show you, it never works. Couldn't find any people who are not subject to the image. All right, so what do you got to do to fix this? Go to Settings. Uh, it may be called Preferences on a PC. On some Macs, it may even be called Preferences. I found this is kind of different on different Macs. But in my Mac right now, it's called Settings. And on a Mac, it's under the Photoshop 2025 menu. On a PC, it would be under the Edit menu. So you go down to Settings or Preferences. Then you go, would go down to Image Processing. And you'll notice right here that there are four different options with dropdowns. And a long time ago, I changed the default of the first dropdown. Do you know if you want to make a selection of a subject, you have the option to have the cloud do it or have your computer do it? And by default, it's going to have your computer do it, but you'll get more accurate selection using the cloud. Well, you could change that so it defaults to cloud. And that's what I did a long time ago. So that first setting I did a long time ago. It, by default, will be on quicker results. So I changed that one. But the setting we need to make this work is this middle setting, Remove Tool Processing. From what Adobe tells me, by default, when it's on faster, it's going to use your GPU. But if you want to use the CPU, you need to change it to, we can't see what it says, got to change it to more stable. All right, so change it to more stable. Also take a look at the other two settings there. If you do selections or you enhance detail a lot, you may want to change those to more stable. They'll probably give you a better result. Although supposedly this will take longer to get that result. So I'm just going to change the one just to demonstrate more stable. Click OK. Now, unfortunately, you got to close down Photoshop and reopen it for that to take effect. So we'll close down Photoshop. And then I'm going to load these two images back into Photoshop along with a few others. All right, so we have some images here. I'm just going to drag them all into Photoshop. Now this will, uh, because we're using this, this new you know, option where it's using the CPU, uh, it does take quite a while to do it. And um, even like removing wires, that worked fine for me uh, prior, the remove wires feature. Now it still removes wires when I have this function turned on or this option turned on. It still removes wires perfectly, but it takes longer to do it. All right, so we have this image here, the, again, the Smithsonian Institute of the Carriage, and we have the two people. We are on the remove tool. We're going to use auto. We're going to find distractions, and we're going to go to people. All right, now it's going to take a second to find the people there. It found the people, and it found her shadow too. Now, you do have this brush. You do have the, the actual healing or the actual remove brush. I keep trying to call it a healing brush. Uh, but you could come in and modify this if you need to. And I'm going to show you an example where I may have to modify it. But I like that. So once you're satisfied with that, what you would do is come up here and click this little check mark. Then it's going to use your CPU to remove those people. And it does take a little long. So on some of these, I may have to pause the recording and then come back and we'll take a look at it. We'll let it do its thing. Totally, almost totally. But it's working on it. And I do want to give you a commercial uh, very quick. Why don't I do that now while it's doing this? Because it's going to take a while. Um, I am taking part, again, in the Photoshop Virtual Summit. This is the Virtual Summit 6. It's five days, 40 classes. It's totally free. Uh, what it is, how it works is each day a number of classes will go live and you'll have 48 hours to watch them all you want for free. When that 48 hours is over, then the class goes away and you can't watch it anymore. But if you want to buy a VIP pass, if you buy that, then you'll be able to watch any and all of the classes for free forever. So you have the option to buy the VIP pass. Also, those that do buy the VIP pass get freebies. For example, you get um, PDF outlines of each of the videos. I'm giving away my presets for Lightroom, and they work in Photoshop, and my profiles for Lightroom and Photoshop. You get those for free if you're a VIP member. Get all of the images I use in my videos so you can work along at home. And there's something called like um, a goodie bag or a grab bag or something that VIP members get. 
inside of that bag will be a discount code where you could buy anything from me off my website for 50% off. It includes all my courses, Photoshop, Lightroom, Topaz, and any new ones I happen to come out before that discount code expires. And that discount code will last for a week after the summit ends. So it'll last during the summit and then for a week after the summit ends. So check that out. I'll have a link to my website so you can check this out and um, maybe become a VIP member of the Photoshop Virtual Summit 6. All right, we're back and you look, hey, it removed the people. I actually did an excellent job. So remove the people just dandy. Let's try another one. Let's go to, not that one. Um, let's go to the one of the horseshoe in Ohio State, Ohio State University. And we have these people down here, right? So again, we're on the remove tool. We're going to go to find distractions. We're going to go to people. And it usually finds the people actually pretty quick. It's just removing the people takes a little longer. Now, you see I found the people. We have the masks. They look good. So we'll just click the check mark. Now, when this was in beta, the curious thing, if you watch my other video, I mentioned this. When this was in beta, in the beta version of Photoshop, it actually worked on my computer without changing a setting. It worked fine. It just, when it went live, it stopped working for whatever reason. When it was on my computer in beta, it worked, but it didn't work very good. It, it really kind of messed up the background often. I've noticed that this version, the live version, the real version now works a lot better. Uh, you can see it worked great. It moved the people, the, um, barriers and whatnot that were behind the people look natural. So it did a great job. Let's go to another one with people way off in the distance. This, of course, Niagara Falls. We have these people here. I'm not sure if it's going to grab any of the people back here. Let's try. All right. Let's go to find distractions. People. And we'll let it do its thing. It's got to find them and it's going to put the overlay. Yeah, it did. It has overlays on most of the people in the back. And all of the people in this part here, and then we'll just click the check mark. So if you're a travel photographer, this is great because I don't know how many times I was somewhere and I wanted to get a photo of something famous and there's just so many people milling around. It was just impossible to do it. it does have its limitations though. And I'm going to show you that in a moment uh, because it, it, um, it just sometimes if there's just too many people, it won't work. And I have uh, an instance when I was in Washington, D.C., and uh, it was the Cherry Blossom Festival. If you've ever been in Washington, D.C. during the Cherry Blossom Festival, you'll know that it is probably the most crowded the city is outside of an inauguration. So it's pretty busy. So you can see it removed all the people here, and it looks great. And it removed most of the people here. There are still some people back there, but it's a lot better. And it looks natural. Now, unfortunately, like some of the other generative AI tools in Photoshop, it does not give you three versions to look at. You just get what you get. And if you don't like it, you're going to have to undo it by hitting Command or Control Z as in Zebra and then try it again because it seems to give different, like most generative AI things nowadays, no matter what application you're using, it doesn't give you consistent results. It may work one way one time and work a different way a second time. So, it's just something we're going to have to live with. Now, this is one where it's not going to work. I'll just tell you, there's just too many people. This is the Lincoln Memorial uh, in Washington. And here, let me just show you. Let's go up to find distractions, people. Here's just too many people. And it's, uh, I tried this and it found a little person right here and a person over here, but it ignored all the people in the middle. So there's just too many people taking too much of the, taking up too much of the frame and it won't work. Now, this image here may need some modification. So this is why I included this image. So we're going to go up to Find Distractions, People. Now, again, as I mentioned, this gives you different results every time. So it's kind of uh, hard for me to say, here's what's going to happen because it may not happen. But I do notice that when it does do its masking, it consistently masks the same every single time. So when I tried this in practice, it didn't mask this little phone that's here, didn't mask some of the bottom part here, and it didn't mask all of this person's shoulder over here. So I'm going to leave it like that and click the check mark. Now what happened when I did this before I started the video and I left it like this, it put people in there. It actually put a headless person in there. It was really weird. So I had a headless person in the scene. Um, 
but I was able to fix it. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. So, so we'll let it do its thing and hopefully it puts a person still so it's not making a lawyer out of me. A headless is optional. We'll let that, but we'll see. And it's coming along. And surprisingly, the fans on my computer aren't going full bore uh, like sometimes they do when you do this generative AI stuff. Um, really seems to be a, a taxing procedure on your CPU and GPU. Uh, doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, yeah, we got the headless per We got two headless people. There's one here and there's one here. So that isn't good, right? So we're going to undo that by hitting Command Z or Z on my computer. It's Mac on a PC. It's Control Z or Z. So we're going to do it again. We're going to come up here, find distractions, people. Now we're going to have to modify this. So once it brings us this selection, we need to come in here. We need to make sure that we got all the shoulder. And I'm even going to get rid of this sign. All right. Even though it's a people thing. It doesn't get like all along the bottom. I don't know if you could see it, but it, it didn't get all along the bottom area. And we have this phone here. We have this little junk there. And we have the top of this sign here. That's all I did last time, and it was able to work perfectly. So we'll click the little check mark and let it do its thing. And it should, if it is consistent, gives me the consistent results that I had last time, it should work perfectly. And there was no, as though no people were standing there at all. And the background looked perfect. Everything fit. Abe Lincoln was happy. I was happy. And it should be done any second. It does take a little longer doing it this way, though, if you're familiar with it. But if you're getting weird results or whatever, just change it in, you know, from the faster to the more stable. And uh, restart Photoshop. And um, I think you'll see a significant difference. Of course, I may have to pause this video. It's taking too long, and I'm running out of things to talk about. But it's happening. There it is. It removed it. And this time it put something weird right here. So I don't like that. But it didn't do that last time. That's why I said you get weird results. But you come, you have the, you still have the remove tool. So what you could come in is you could come in like this and just try to get rid of that. Then come up here and click this check mark. And let it hopefully do its thing and get rid of that. Yeah, and it did. So it looks good. So... Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. We did that one. We did that one. We couldn't do that one. Niagara Falls looks all right. And uh, the Horseshoe in Ohio State University looks fine. So that's it. This is this uh, new feature, this find distractions, uh, remove people. Uh, you just have to change a setting and you'll be good to go. I'd like to thank uh, the person at Adobe who just saw my video and decided to email me. Uh, thank you. You're helping a lot of us by doing that. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of you watching my videos. I really do. I'll talk to you guys soon.